Astronomers using the Hubble Space Telescope just discovered a moon orbiting dwarf planet Maki Maki. What the hell is Maki Maki? Maki Maki. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Deal with it. Wait. <laughs> Start to see pictures, eh? I don't know if you know this. Thor News is for winners. And that's why you're here. To stick around. Stay cool. Thor News presents. Ladies and gentlemen, Maki Maki has a moon moon. Or a moon, moon. Crazy, I know. We are over at the Planetary Society. Your place in space. It's that place where Bill Nass trying to build that goofy light sail. Man, whatever. He's taking like five-year-old's money to build a light sail. Science. Awesome. Anyway, I'm excited because one of my favorite scientists wrote this article. Alex Parker. All right, let me break it down for you guys who may not be paying attention or are new to Thor News. Somewhere around 2004, 2006, Mikey Brown and his gang found a whole bunch of planets like Eris, Sedna, Maki Maki, Quarrel, and then so instead of freaking everybody out, going, "Hey, dudes, we found a bunch of planets," they demoted Pluto, and then like everybody forgot that they found Eris, Sedna, Maki Maki, Quarrel, and like nobody really talks about it. So now that they're saying, "Hey, we found a moon for Make Make," people are like, "What the hell is Make Make?" Maki Maki. Well, Maki Maki's a or planetoid, a dwarf planet. I don't know, dude. Use whatever word you want to use. I'm not big on. Getting into semantical arguments because those are for fools. If I want to be a fool, I want to be a fun fool, man. And arguing is not really fun. Now, to Alex's words. The solar system beyond Neptune is full of worlds hosting moons. The dwarf planets Pluto, Eris, and Haume are all known to have one or moons orbiting them. And Alex, that sentence could be stronger. <laughs> the dwarf planets Pluto, Eris, and Haume are all known to have one or moons orbiting them. It might be accurate. It's just a little awkward. However... You see, their moons might even have moons. However, for years, and despite no small amount of search effort, the dwarf planet Maki Maki appeared to be solitary. Oh my god, the planet found a girlfriend. I mean, heck, if I can find a girlfriend, I guess Maki Maki can find one too. In many ways, Maki Maki is much like Pluto. It's filled with space weed and is populated by dwarfs. Plus, it smells like bacon jelly beans. And it is two thirds the size and it has a methane covered surface with a reddish color that is indicative of a dose of Thorlin, Tholin-like material. Tholin is kind of like a bromide, but different. So why did Maki Maki lack a moon? Did Maki Maki made it through the history of the solar system without suffering a moon-forming giant impact like the other distant dwarf planets? I mean, make, did Maki Maki, see, it would be, did Maki Maki make it through? You could have said make three times, bro. You just missed a total score there. It just shows none of us are perfect. I, okay, now we know. That the picture was simply incomplete before. Maki Maki does have a moon. Earlier this week, Mark Bowie, Will Grundy, Solomon Grundy, Keith Knoll, and myself announced the discovery of a Maki Maki and moon in the Hubble Space Telescope images. Well, you guys don't play with ladies, man. You guys got no lady scientists doing some cool science and stuff. Uh, you guys are gonna get in trouble. We nicknamed MK Ultra 2, and the IAU has provisionally designated as S2015. One. Well, that's a horrible name. We've done a preliminary characterization of MK Ultra 2's properties and submitted a paper describing its implications, which you can read here. In the following post, I'll walk through how we found the moon, a few of the things we've learned about it, and what we can learn with future observations. It's about 170 kilometers for a 4% albedo. And remember, albedo is the sex drive of the planet. So apparently the moon's pretty old or pretty young because it looks like its sex drive is pretty low. That's fine, I don't really give a crap about sex life to planets, as long as they're both adults and consenting, you know? It's got a semi-major axis of 21,000 kilometers for a circular orbit, and an orbital period of about 12 days for a circular orbit. How to find a moon? Stand in front of the bathroom mirror, drop your pants. That was your answer. You're immature like me. The vast majority of the Kuiper Belt companions, oh, how cute, have been discovered with the Hubble Space Telescope. The combination, you know, the Hubble Space Telescope is badass in the 25 years they've had, Alex. Don't you think they should put up maybe like a new and improved telescope, Alex? Like, I'm thinking the optics technology might have improved in the last 25 years, bro. You know, it's like, why don't they replace the Hubble? Is it like they don't want us to see stuff? Is it like they don't want us to make new discoveries? It's like they don't want to let the public in on what's going on? And it's like they started designing the James Webb Space Telescope in 1997. And uh, knowing the technology curve re places itself every three and a half years, there's no way the James Webb Space Telescope is state-of-the-art. You know what I'm saying, Alex? Like, it's, it's simply, they surely they jest, right, bro? Anyway, 
And I don't know how the James Webb Space Telescope's gonna make it into space. I mean, the whole thing's just made of cash. And it's really flammable. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. All right, you know, dude, I bring some of the hardest points you could ever imagine here. It's just some people can't read between the lines to understand what the hell I'm saying. And that just means you gotta study more and open up your mind, and then you'll start to get it. I was talking about his reading Alex's stuff. The combination of its high sensitivity and its very high angular resolution make it able to see very faint objects right next to very bright objects. This is what allowed us to discover MK2 sitting adjacent to the 1300 times brighter Mucky Mucky. Exoplanet direct imaging also requires the ability to see faint targets very close to bright ones. Thank God you're not talking to me about gravitational lensing, man. The ground-based instruments like the Gemini Planet Imager are remarkably good at this. However, they don't quite have the sensitivity to reliably detect moons like MK2. Speaking of MK Ultra, Alex, when can we get new photos of Eris? Like the last one I saw was like 2004-2005. When can we get new photographs of Sedna? The last one I saw looked like it was from 2006. I mean, somebody just having to place it on my machine. <laughs> All right. Um. No, but I mean, seriously, man, I'd like a new photo of Eris. And ground-based instruments like the Gemini Planet Imager are remarkably good at this. However, they don't quite have the sensitivity to reliably detect moons like MK2. For example, the exoplanet 51 Arab Arab discovered in Gemini imagery is only a factor of a few times fainter than Maki Maki itself. MK2 is hundreds of times fainter still. That said, the images collected by the Hubble present their own challenges. Because it is in low Earth orbit, Hubble's detectors are frequently struck by cosmic rays that create bright streaks on other images. These streaks wipe out any real information about the sky behind them. To get around this, we design Hubble observations to re-image the same spot on the sky several times and use these repeat observations to correct for the transient cosmic ray strikes. Cosmic rays are a bitch. One way to remove the cosmic ray is to lay the images on top of one another and then sort each pixel by brightness. In this stack, things like cosmic rays will float to the top layer, while the, while the image information common to most of the images sinks to about the middle layer. The GIF below is an illustration of this sorting in progress. The images are centered on MK2 and are all six of the Hubble images that reveal the moon. The bright cosmic ray streaks float over to the right and after sorting, the selected image is relatively clean of image detects. Didn't somebody edit this, man? Man, check out those pixels, bro. Those pixels are stacked. So yeah, they remove background stars and stuff. Ooh, this is a pretty picture. So yeah, boom, there's the moon. All right, what can we do with the moon? Okay, so, all right, so I'll, I have to continue this in part two. Uh, it's been fun. Hopefully, we've learned stuff. Uh, seriously, why don't they replace the Hubble? All right, peace out. Be back soon.